All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We're here tonight with Christina. Christina, how the heck are you? I'm good. I'm doing really well. Um, I just found out less than two weeks ago that I was accepted to my number one top choice program, NYU, and I start classes next Monday. <laughs> so uh, I'm uh, very excited. <laughs> yeah, like all kinds of weird emotions, like anxiety excitement you're thrilled but stressed at the same time like so yeah. fun but so crazy yeah i figured that after getting my acceptance it would just like my emotions would just take on high up there but it's still been a roller coaster but i like it i don't mind it <laughs> okay so we're gonna get into some more details about your experience right so how long has it been since you've waited to get this number one offer? Wow, so I got, I received an interview invitation in November. I interviewed with them November. Um, and I found out in February that I actually was waitlisted. At first, I was really disappointed because, you know, I really thought that I was capable of getting in like smoothly. Um, and I just didn't feel like waiting around was just like the greatest option for myself. I wanted them to remember who I was and what, where I came from in my story and that I was capable of being part of that program. So I wrote them a letter of intent and basically I just told them how my values align with the values of their program. And I submitted it in April, I want to say, and I found out less than two weeks ago that I was accepted into the program. So I'm very grateful for it. Um, uh, the timing isn't what I thought it would be, but I, I believe everything happens for a reason. So right. I'm happy. life, uh, life rarely comes at a moment of our choosing. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, um, it happened, right? Like all this buildup, right? All this time you devoted to it. And at the same time, what a cool story. It's kind of like a buzzer beater. You know what I mean? Like at the very last second, you pulled it off and literally the very last second <laughs> but hey it happened <laughs> so did you kind of have to like because it's so late in the, the application season right and it had been so slow and you'd written your letter of intent did you hear anything back after you wrote your letter of intent um well what i did was i contacted the missions coordinator and i asked who i can send it directly to and so she gave me um this per, like certain person's um email so i contacted him and as soon as i sent it maybe the next day he told me that that the admissions committee would review it and they would still consider my application so he had kept in contact with him within like with me within the last few weeks like between april and my acceptance date gotcha gotcha yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, yeah. So let's go back. Okay, let's start at the beginning. Um, okay. Tell us a little bit about your pre-PT journey and where it all started leading up to this great climax of getting into NYU's DPT program. So I was born and raised in Miami, Florida in a single parent household. I went to Florida International University for undergrad where I received my bachelor's in recreation and sport management. And I was a dancer all my life until last year. And so with dancing comes many injuries. I had a few knee injuries and that was my first stepping stone into the world of physical therapy. And from the get go, it just really captivated me. And I knew that that was something I wanted to pursue um, further into uh, establishing a career out of it. And then I started working as a physical therapy tech and that's what really solidified that I was that I was making the right decision and what I wanted to pursue my career choice as. And it led me just to, I also was in many leadership roles in undergrad. And I think like having this experience, experience with leadership roles and working in physical therapy settings and, observe, and observing other settings as well was what really shaped me as a person that was determined I persevered no matter what obstacle was thrown my way. And I just always like wanted to show the compassion that anything I set my mind to, I wanted to inspire others to do the same. Yeah. Oh, that's a fantastic backdrop. Thank you. Um, I think one of the things about our time interacting with each other that I've always admired about you is, um, and you kind of mentioned that you got this from your mom, 
right? And her, her attitude, her stick to itiveness, her perseverance was um, in the midst of COVID, you had an event that you were working on and that got taken away from you. And then you, but you did something else with it, right? So go ahead and tell that story. I didn't want to steal your thunder with. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. You know, I, I humble myself down sometimes. Um, so I, in FIU, all of my three years that I was there, I was in dance marathon. And I, my last year there in 2019, I served as the director of morale. And this event, like I cherish with all my heart because we dance for 17 hours long and we fundraise money to be donated to Nicholas Children's Hospital. If I could do it every year, I would. That's However, due to COVID-19, it was canceled last year in April 2020, and it would have been my fourth and final year. And I was absolutely devastated. Um, that's when everything started happening, and I didn't realize that that whole year would just change drastically. So that was the first stepping stone. And as the cases were rising in Miami and co uh, with COVID, I had a friend who came up to me, and she said she had an idea about assembling face shields and don donating them to local hospitals or facilities that were in desperate need of them during the summer. And I told her I would be more than willing to help. And we established Shield America Now, in which I was the lead volunteer for the delivery team. And I was also part of the assembly team. And in total, it was over 100 people who just volunteered throughout their summer last year to help donate and assemble face shields. And I'm it's one of my, my proudest accomplishments because we were, we were able to assemble over 2,000 and donate, donate face shields to um, like hospitals such as Mount Sinai Medical Center here in Miami Beach. So that's what we did last year. And I think it made a significant impact in Miami. Sure, sure. And, and I think um, just props to you guys for taking the initiative to see a need, fill a need instead right. of in the midst of all the turmoil and the craziness and the chaos and the confusion of what's going on, um, you found something constructive to do. And, right. and that is, that was what was so cool to me and led to you being one of our scholarship awardees was because you took the time to serve others in the midst of what would be a very stressful time for someone else who's like in the middle of applying, finishing up a semester, like all this stuff going on. Um, so I, I just hope, and I know you will, you'll continue to carry that with you. Um, and you have no idea the doors that will open for you if you keep that mentality. So thank you again for that service to your community and the example that you gave. I, I definitely, this isn't the first time a lot of people who follow my channel um, have seen or heard about Shield America because I just thought it was such a cool thing. Um, and I think it's great what you guys did. And are, are you guys doing anything right now at all i'm assuming you're kind of like it's it's somewhat winding down in terms yeah. of the need so are you guys like okay we're <laughs> we're gonna move on to something else and you've got physical therapy school coming up but i was just curious if you guys are doing yeah. anything else yeah no we're on, we're unwinding we we have been unwinding for a couple months now just because everything is somewhat returning to normalcy and also um, since I was in the summer, we weren't in school, like a majority of us had graduated. Right. So not like, focusing on graduate schools, medical schools, and other professional schools. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Off to do other great things. Yes. Um, right. So let's talk about how did you find out about physical therapy application coach? What, what brought us together for you? Oh, yeah, that was just a random uh, stroke of fate, I think, because I was in pre-therapy student association. Um, the short is PTSA FIU, and I follow them on Instagram, and I somehow came across your Instagram, and I was doing research about you before I decided to contact you, and I was, re and I was watching other people's testimonials and things like that, and I realized, like, this guy could really help me because I initially felt so lost and overwhelmed with how to even approach PT casts and how to get everything assorted and assembled and just organized. I felt like I was just all over the place and didn't know where to start. So that's how I found you. And that was, I remember last January, because I wanted to make sure I was starting at a really good time, even though PT cast wouldn't open until June. But yeah. I remember that because you were, 
um, I had just rolled out like my consultation coaching. Um, and we, you were among some of the, one of the first to start working, um, with me and, and we just, we sat down and we mapped out a plan that was personalized to you. Um, basically we went through and evaluated everything and looked at like, okay, well, this is where you stand. Here are some things we can work on. What are you okay to try? And what do you want to avoid? Right. Um, and how do you feel like that process helped you to organize yourself going into PT cast? Cause it's stressful enough by itself. Like even if you know what you're doing more or less, it's stressful enough, but how do you feel like having the consultation coaching helped you to get ready? Oh my gosh. I felt like I did a complete 180 in terms of soothing my anxiety because I had planned out with your help. I had planned out like what I would be doing each month, whether it be studying for the GRE for three months. And then after taking that, like just a, like looking into PT cast and knowing which to tackle first, the personal statement or entering or submitting letter, letters recommendation. Like I just, I knew all of last year, I had it all organized and by month by month due to your help and due to that consultation call, it really helped me. And I was, it was like smooth sailing from then on out with PT cast. I had no problem with it, honestly, just because of all the advice you had given me. I knew where to start and then where to go after that. Awesome. Awesome. And it's, it's not rocket science. It's just mm -hmm. giving you a plan, right? And being able to have someone who's, I've applied, I like to joke and say I've applied hundreds of times, right? Because I've applied with, with all of you guys over <laughs> and over again. And it doesn't mean I know everything about it, but I've, I've had more experience than someone who's applying for the first time. Um, and as a result of that, just making something that looks like a scary monster and saying like, okay, it's not that scary. It's a lot of work. It takes time and energy and focus, but it's not as scary as you think it is. So awesome. Thank you. That's a, that's a good plug for how it helps just to get you organized and focused. Um, now let's talk about, then we moved on to the next phase, right? Essays and interview coaching, which I'm going to kind of lump them together because they have a lot of crossover. Um, how do you feel like these coaching sessions made a difference in your application? Well, I remember with the essay, I, my first draft, I'm, I like to pride myself in being a good writer. And I thought my first draft was easy piece of cake. And after our first consultation call, I realized I completely avoided the question and I wasn't answering it correctly. And after a few sessions, um, it really helped out, helped me out in the sense that um, like not all applicants really are able to answer the question effectively. And that's what admissions are looking at. And with interview, I remember I was, it was actually NYU that had called me first for my first ever interview. And I remember being just a sack of nerves because I was like, I don't know how to do this. Like, I'm not really good with speaking. And after a few sessions as well, um, you were able to like, just like calm down those nerves and like with our practice and our mock um, interviews, which I think helped me tremendously. And uh, again, I did a full 180, lots of growth going on over there. And it, I think it all helped me tremendously. Like I started as very shy and like just like a little bit all over the place. And after all of our sessions culminated, I felt like I grew a lot as an individual just because of all the things I had to tackle on. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, I think um, watching you realize that you were, worthy is the wrong word, that you were legitimately qualified to get into that program. Um, that's cool. When you can see an applicant, like they start out and they're just scared to death and they're like, Oh my gosh, like all these other people are so much better than me. I know it. And that doesn't matter come interview day because if you legitimately believe like, Hey, you invited me to come to an interview. You obviously think I'm a good applicant. Let me show you that I 100% believe that I'm the best person for your program. Um, and it's not to step on anyone else's toes, but you earned the right to get an interview. Why not seal the deal? Um, and, and that was a cool transformation was as we got further into the essays, right? Um, I, you know, it, it's this overall arc. We started out with your consultation call. We were with your strategy for the application. It was just so much disorganization and feeling like I, I have no idea what I'm doing. I don't know if I want it, if I'm going to be able to do this. I want to set the reapply. And then by the end, 
when you were done with your last interview coaching session, it was, I, I know I deserve to get into PT school and I'm confident in who I am as a person, as an applicant and someone who's going to contribute to the profession. Um, and to me, that transformation is the best part about coaching pre-PTs is seeing you go becoming a future physical therapist is not an event. It's a process. And people who go through and put the work in like you did, it happens. And now as you step into becoming uh, an SPT, there's going to be bumps and bruises and things you're going to have to learn, but you are that much more prepared than someone who hasn't walked that walk and doesn't actually believe now, like, yeah, this is going to be hard, but I, I know I'm awesome and I deserve a chance to show how I can make this profession better. And honestly, like I say, thanks to you um, for helping me change that mindset because I don't, I no longer, like, it's not just applied for applications. I apply it now for daily things going on in my life. And I think that was the best culmination of being like your student or your mentee. You know, I think that's the most tremendous thing ever. Well, thanks. And I'm glad it worked. You caught the vision of it because there are people who are like, I just want my essay. And that's Mm -hmm. fine. Like, if you just want to have your essay done, like, I'll help you. Um, but the people who can catch the vision of these skills and these attributes that you can really hone and and own as an applicant, it's, it's awesome. It's my favorite thing about it. So thank you. Um, so we got into NYU. What other programs did you get accepted to and what made you decide to go to NYU? I was accepted also into University of New England and University of St. Augustine, the Miami campus. That was actually um, my first acceptance. And I received that acceptance 11 days after my interview, which was shocking to me. And New England notified me about a week or two before NYU did in terms of acceptance. And what made me choose NYU was that's been my dream school. I started on, I had started undergrad. I was uh, coming into undergrad. I already made a list of all the schools I want to apply to for PT and NYU was always at my top choice um, just because of how much I love the program and what it represents um, that I even went to their open house in the summer of 2019. So I knew that it would be difficult, but I knew deep down that I was capable, but with your help, you brought it out and told me you're capable of this, like you're absolutely worth it. And that's, I never looked back since. (laughs) Yes. You haven't had time to. No. (laughs) Um, So another part of your application that, you know, we, before we like officially started recording the interview, you know, we joked that you had like a pre PT baby because you waited nine months to get to this point, right? Like from like starting your application to now. Um, what would you say to maybe an applicant who's in a similar situation to you? Maybe they haven't been accepted to any programs at all. Maybe they're on a wait list and they just feel like nothing's ever going to change. What would you say to them? I would say to, well, three things. Don't lose hope. Uh, be patient and remain focused. All that you've like worked so hard for throughout these last few years are coming to fruition. You just don't know it yet. Um, and in terms of being waitlisted, like I was, um, I instead of waiting around, I really wanted to take my chances and just like take initiative and show admissions that I was capable and not to forget about me. You know, I want, if I could, I would have knocked down their door and be like, hello, remember me. <laughs> uh, instead, I did my research first on how to write a letter of intent. And of course, I, we consulted about that too. And I mm-hmm. think that really sealed the deal for them. And because I think it made an impact. Like, I don't think many people do do that. And I think that's something that um, really stood like out for me or to me, like in terms of how they viewed me was that I took initiative and I was not going to take no for an answer. I was very perseverance, uh, perseverant. So I would definitely also just remain patient. I learned patience and the true meaning of it the last nine months because, oh boy, did I refresh my emails every single day. Um, (laughs) So just stay focused on your goal. Your end goal is to get into PT school and you will do that. Yeah. No, I I think, uh, it wouldn't be your story if there wasn't a, you know what, I'm going to go do something about this. Right. Yeah. 
Um, that's just that, the type of person that you are. And I think that's a big reason why NYU picked you was you can teach people how to do joint mobilizations and assess injuries and be able to screen differential diagnosis, right? You can teach people how to do that, but you can't teach someone how to have initiative and how to have drive. That's, um, you can help people get there, but if it's something that's just a spark that's built into someone, uh, those people go on and they change the world, right? So um, I'm really excited for you. And I think, um, you know, New York is a huge city with lots of opportunities and NYU has a lot of great um, opportunities as well. So who knows what the future has in store for you. And congratulations. I know it's going to be a quick turnaround time. So <laughs> remind it. Okay. Let's, let's talk to people again. Cause some people maybe have a quick turnaround time as well. So you found out two weeks ago, less, less, less. than two weeks ago, less than two weeks ago. And then what's the sequence leading up to full board classes? Right. I found out less than two weeks ago. I immediately accepted and did everything I had to do to become enrolled. I start classes June 14th, so in six days, and <laughs> that's virtual. <laughs> and it's virtual until July 20th, in which that's when in person classes begin. And we're but I'm Big Apple. I early the first weekend of July, I move up there. So in three weeks. <laughs> there you go. It's crazy, crazy time. Well, Christina, thank you so much. It's been a, an honest pleasure to watch this whole process play out. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm watching a movie with, with you guys. Like I get a front row seat to the, the drama and the highs and the lows and, and all this stuff. And it, uh, it makes it all worth it when you see someone who is so deserving get something that they've worked so hard for. Um, and I think pat yourself on the back at, at right now there's a lot going on and you're trying to get things sorted out and process what's happened uh but i hope one day you can just sit down and be like wow that was amazing you know like the applicants i'm kind of jealous for the applicants who applied during covid because like what a cool life experience like i got into pg school during the craziest year arguably of many of our lifetime probably you know what i mean yeah. like hopefully i don't want any more crazy years like that yeah. um, but to have that confidence of like, if I got through that, you know, the, there's so many other things that you could easily just get through because you have the, the toughness and the, the mental fortitude to push through uh, chaotic and difficult things. Um, and big props to all of you guys who got accepted. Um, and it's, if someone didn't want to apply because of COVID, that's fine. Like, I understand. But I have a lot of respect for people who took the leap of faith and said, you know what, it's, it's going to work out. Let's make it happen. And they went for it. Okay, well, Christina, keep us posted if there's anything else that you need. Don't forget about all those awesome resources to help you as you make the jump to an, an SPT that's with your Teachable account. Um, those are going to help you out tremendously. Again, it's, it's creating a game plan for you once you get into PT school. Like the process never stops. You get a new set of challenges. You create a new process to help you be efficient. And inevitably, things fall apart and you just continue to course correct throughout the whole time. Um, but I know that you'll do great um, regardless of what happens um, and where you go in the future and best of luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Thank you so much for all your help this past literal year. I want to say year and a half now. Yeah, I that's think. weird. I know. <laughs> that's a long movie. That is a long movie. Yeah. I really don't think like I would be where I am right now without your guidance. Like I, when I started off as a very neurotic and just all over the place and now I'm um, just, everything's a little, a little more calm, but still, you know, but still a little I, neurotic, but a little yeah. less neurotic. Yeah. <laughs> but still, honestly, thank you so much. Like I, I owe this all to you for helping me throughout this process, honestly. Well, and go to all the other future applicants like working under Sean, best thing ever, honestly. <laughs> thank you so much, Christina. That's the best endorsement you could ever give. Just thank you. Um, and we'll talk to you soon. Enjoy New York. Yes, thank you. I'll keep you updated.